Good morning, lovelies. Today we're going to be talking about my least favorite horror movie tropes. Don't get me wrong, I love horror movies. I love the whole horror October aesthetic, obviously. But if one or more of these horror tropes comes up in a movie that I'm watching, I, that's it. I'm out. Before we get started, remember to click that subscribe button and ring the bell so you don't miss another video I post every Sunday. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. All those links are in the description. I've also upgraded my vampire look from classical to modern leather wearing jacket because this room is freezing. And also I look good in leather. Okay, most of the reason is because I look good in leather. This room is not cold at all. Number one, the dumb chick. The Too Stupid to Live heroines. Why is she here and how did she survive this long? Like, no, seriously, why? I mentioned this one in the top 10 least favorite female character tropes. She's a pretty idiot who only exists to either die gruesomely or to get into a highly avoidable, dangerous situation so the hero can rescue and then bang her. And I just hate it. Number two. On a related note, where is everyone's self-preservation instincts? Or brain cells? I know that humans can be dumb sometimes. I've studied history. We have a long record of it. But horror movies seem to bring out the greatest stupidity by sheer volume. Let's investigate the spooky mansion without telling anyone where we're going. What could go wrong? I just, I just don't get it. I really don't. Smart characters, to me, heighten the terror of a good horror movie. Because if you have characters who are really intelligent, who take precautions and like go together in groups and they still end up killed, that's terrifying. But if you have to bring the protagonist down so that it's even feasible for the villain to kill them, then you don't have a particularly scary villain. Number three, Everyone split up. We're in a big group with over a dozen people. So the obvious thing to do is to split up into pairs or even singular units so that the sole killer can hunt us all down one by one. Why would you do this? Humans are pack creatures. There is a reason that we live in family groups and cities and socialize. We do that even when there's a pandemic and we should not do that. So we know on an instinctive level that it is better to stay together, especially in dangerous situations. So why don't they do that in horror movies? Trick question, the writers want an easy way to separate them so that their killer can kill them off one by one. If you want or need your characters to be separated, find more creative ways to do it. It's been done. Number four, whore versus virgin. Guess who lives? So you remember in the 1980s, okay, I don't remember because I was born in 95, but generally speaking in the 1980s, how we tried to scare teenagers away from having sex by having them killed in horror movies and how it didn't work. What I really don't like about it is that the, the girl who has sex with a bunch of people is always this bitchy, catty idiot, and the virgin is this pure, smart, soft, sweet girl who always survives to the end. And we're rooting for her to survive, and we're rooting for the whore to die because she's such a bitch. It is attaching morality to sex when they are two very different things. Having sex does not make you a bad person who deserves to die. Not having sex does not make you a good person who deserves to survive. Sex and morality have nothing to do with each other. Number five, every person of color dies. So story time, a little while ago, I walked into the living room while I was visiting my parents and my mom and my brother were watching this sci-fi horror movie, Life. It's these astronauts go and they find like actual life, a creature on Mars and they bring it aboard their ship to study and the creature breaks out and starts killing them all one by one. And I walked in halfway through and they explained the basic premise to me and I'd seen the previews and I knew automatically, okay, so we're down to four survivors. The black person who is, has a disability and is already injured is gonna die next. The Asian guy who has a family is going to die after that and then it's going to take us down to our last two people a white guy and a white woman and the guy is going to try to sacrifice himself nobly for the woman and the real tension in the story is whether or not that's going to work and i was right basically in any given horror movie you might start with a diverse cast but by the time you make it to the final act all of the people of color have died off and that's just not right 
Worse, the characters of color often die for the white characters, sacrificing themselves so they may live. Life did this too. I mean, we've had enough people of color dying for white people for the last, oh, 400 years or so. Maybe we should stop? This trope is so pervasive that I can count on one hand all of the horror movies I've seen that subverts this in some way. One is Jordan Peele movies, and seriously, if you haven't seen them, you should. And the other is this movie called The Descent 2. It was a sequel to The Descent, and at the end of the story, there's this, it's a white woman and a black woman, and they're trying to get out of this cave filled with monsters, and the white woman causes a diversion that kills her and, like, allows the black woman to escape. And this ended up being futile because it's one of the stories where nobody survives, but, you know, it's, it's the thought that counts. Number six, when the walking killers, or zombies, are faster than sprinting heroes. In this house, we obey the basic laws of physics, unless it is explicitly a paranormal or possession movie. This is honestly why I prefer fast zombies to slow zombies. Does it make sense for dead people to be that fast? No. Does it make sense for dead people to rise from the grave? Also no. So there's no reason not to do it, and there's no reason for slow zombies to pose a threat, because they will never catch up to a running hero. Speaking of zombies... Number seven, that one person in the zombie movie who hides the fact that they've been bitten by a zombie, thus endangering the lives of everyone around them. Why would you do this? You're dead either way! You might as well get it done quickly with a bullet rather than the slow, agonizing death of a zombie transformation and then chomping on your friends and family, thus condemning them to the same fate! I get that you want to spend your last few hours with your loved ones in blissful ignorance while you pretend that everything is fine and you don't want to worry them or any of that bullshit, but if you let yourself become a zombie in the process, you're just gonna end up killing them! These characters are basically the anti-vaxxers of horror movies. I cannot stand them. Number eight, the killer kills because they're insane. Okay, so a little bit of personal history here. I worked for an organization called Dungarvan for two and a half years. It's an organization that helps people with disabilities, mental and physical, achieve their goals. Basically, I was a PCA slash job coach for people with disabilities. There were a handful of moments in those two and a half years where I feared for my safety. And that fear came explicitly from people who were not my clients getting involved. Abusive exes, police officers, handsy strangers, that sort of thing. Never did I fear for my personal safety from my clients. Now, of course, there are people with mental illnesses who do pose a threat to society, but they are a fraction of a percent. Someone with a mental illness is far more likely to hurt themselves than anyone else. That was honestly the biggest risk that I had to deal with when I was working for Dungarvan. In fact, people with mental or physical disabilities are far more likely to be victims of violent crimes than perpetrators. So maybe we should stop villainizing them in these movies? That would be terrific. Number nine, everyone prioritizes their own petty problems over survival. Like, their arguments are so loud that the killer or monster could hear them from space. Like, guys, we have way more important things to worry about than who slept with whose boyfriend. Like, maybe we can shelve this discussion when our lives are not in mortal danger? Hello? Anybody? There's always that one person who makes us actively look forward to when they get disemboweled because they're that much of an asshole and they're so freaking petty and they just exist to make the other protagonist's lives utterly miserable until the villain shows up and like murders them. I don't want to root for characters to get killed. I want to fear it. That's the whole reason I sit down to watch this movie. Sometimes this whole thing is used as a metaphor, like humans are the real monsters. I guess I'm just too much of an optimist for this message. And number 10, the inexplicable resurrection of the villain. Real talk, we all love those monsters and killers who are basically indestructible. Not only does this make them scary because holy hell, how am I supposed to defeat this thing? But it also ensures that we get a few more movies out of the franchise. But I need a reason why blowing them up doesn't work. Especially if this villain that we're supposed to be fearing is a regular human instead of some sort of alien monster or demon or ghost. Like, if it's a supernatural entity, then yeah, I get it. It's supernatural. It, a bullet's not gonna cut it. But if it's just a regular flesh and blood person, 
I don't care how many people they've killed, shooting them in the head should do it. This is just bad writing, honestly. That's all I got. List your least favorite horror movie tropes in the comments, and if you know of any horror movies that subvert or avoid these tropes altogether, like Cabin in the Woods or Oculus, please put them in the comments so that we can all check them out. Tis the season. Remember to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss next week's video. I post every Sunday. If you want early access to these videos, support me on Patreon. The link is in the description. I also have a merch store with t-shirts, coffee mugs, phone cases, and other goodies. That link is in the description. Bye lovelies!